What's up YouTube? Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com. Today we're going to be talking about three common thought traps that people fall into when either planning or executing their training or going into competitions that if we avoid these thought traps, we'll be better for it, we'll perform better, we'll have better programs, and all in all, we'll be in a better situation. While you're here, check below for links to programs, hit a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Let's get into the video. The first thought trap I want to talk about is having a constraint-oriented mentality. Now obviously constraints are, are real and they're things we need to consider. There's only so many hours in the day to train. There's only so many exercises we can perform before we start you know, kind of falling off the wagon and getting worse from our training. Um, so some constraints are real and we need to know about them. The important thing though is to not focus so much on constraints that they imprison us in our mind and limit our ability to train, limit our creativity with how we set up our programs, and uh, really get in the way of our ultimate ability to improve. You know, if you look at a calendar and you see seven days, you might think that the only way to schedule a microcycle is in seven day chunks. Or maybe you think that you can only ever train high intensity every 48 hours, and now within that seven day microcycle, you're stuck with only three high intensity specific training sessions before you run out of time. In reality, you may be able to go back to back days sometimes and end up getting more high quality training sessions throughout your year. You know, if you go from having three high intensity training sessions in a week to having four, well, if you train for 10 months out of the year, that's 40 extra high intensity sessions that you gained that you wouldn't have had if you never experimented with going back to back maybe once in a week where you go back to back days of high intensity training, which now gives you four high intensity training sessions in a week, like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you know, that's an opportunity to get more training in. And as long as you're healthy and your body and your mind can handle it, then great. But if you had a constraint mindset and all you ever thought about was I can't train high intensity back to back days ever in my life, that would limit you. So we want to avoid a constraint mindset and instead seek opportunities, be creative with our training programs, and find ways to, you know, get a little bit more efficient with how we plan things. So that way, even though there are constraints that are real that we have to deal with in life, just that's just the nature of life, um, you know, some of the constraints that we think about might not be reality. And we need to be able to separate what are the constraints that are reality and what are the constraints that we're just putting in our head uh, because of information we've consumed um, that is ultimately a limiting factor as opposed to something that can give us opportunities. The second thought trap I want to talk about is the what's the best mindset. Now I can't tell you how many times I've gotten to DM where the question was what's the best exercise for block starts or what's the best exercise for top speed? What's the best exercise for strength? There is no best exercise, okay? There really is not a single best exercise that is objectively the best for every individual out there. What's the best for you is going to depend on what you've done before, what you're capable of now, what your goals are, um, if you've had any injuries. You know, there are things that can impact whether or not a certain exercise or a certain training scheme is better or worse for you. And if all you ever do is think about what's the best thing, you're going to miss the boat completely because that unidimensional or one dimensional way of thinking doesn't take into account the details and the context of your specific situation. And if you're asking someone for help or you're brainstorming within yourself, um, you know, thinking in one dimension is not going to lead you to the most holistically relevant answer. So instead of having a what's the best type of mentality, think multidimensionally so that way you can consider different contextual factors which are affecting you now which impact what the answer is to the question of what is the best thing for this, okay? If you want a new exercise in your program, you gotta know why you want the new exercise, what you expect to get out of it, how it's gonna affect the other things in your training program, and whether or not it really is true that you need to do another exercise to get the thing that you wanna do. You know, maybe focusing on adding a new exercise is not what you need to do, and instead you need to just keep doing what you've been doing, hone your technique, you know, polish up your recovery, your sleep, all that stuff, you know, maybe you don't even need a new exercise, but maybe you do. By thinking multidimensionally, you can come up with the answer yourself, or when you go ask someone for help, they'll be better able to help you because you've done some homework ahead of time and thought about 
different factors that are impacting this question that you have, and they'll be better able to serve you and help you when coming forth with an answer. The third and final thought trap I want to talk about is acting to not fail or playing to not fail. You know, we, we all know someone or we've all ourselves at some point gone into something thinking, man, I hope I don't fail. I hope I don't, you know, miss this dunk. I hope I don't drop this ball. I hope I don't stumble in my block start like I did the last race. And when we think about not failing, instead of thinking about succeeding or thinking about doing, you know, the thing we want to do, and instead we think about the things that we don't want to do or we think about the things we want to avoid, we invite that into our energetic headspace and now that's going to be clouding our ability to do the things we want to do. If you're sitting in the blocks in a race and you're thinking, I hope I don't stumble, you're probably going to stumble because that's what you've now invited into your head and that's your focus for that split second. Instead of having a mentality that is oriented around failure and playing to not fail, we need to have a mentality that is centered around being successful, that emanates confidence, and that attracts the things we want to achieve with whatever we're doing. If we're doing block starts, we need to attract ex you know, explosive speed and being powerful and being fast, whatever resonates with you. We don't want to attract, I hope I don't stumble or I hope I don't, you know, false start or something like that. If you're playing football, you don't go out and play wide receiver with the mentality of, oh, I hope I don't drop this ball right now. You know, you go out there with, I'm going to catch that ball. And if I'm not catching that ball, I'm making sure that the defender does not get an interception. You know, I'm going to do all I can to make sure that this play has a successful outcome. And if it's not looking like it's going to be a successful outcome, I'm at least going to make it a neutral outcome. You know, if you go into a race and all you have is just confidence, success, and positivity in your head, you're probably going to run faster. You're going to be lighter on your feet because you don't have some big weight weighing you down mentally, which then manifests in weighing you down physically, which is going to make you run slower. So when you're out there, either at practice, in a competition, wherever it may be, focus on being confident, focus on success, rather than focusing on failure. So guys, just to recap, when we go about our training and competing, we want to make sure that we avoid these thought traps of having a constraint-oriented mindset, of having the what's the best mindset, and of playing to not fail. Instead, we can look at opportunities and be creative with how we set up our training and execute our training. When we think about things that we might need to add or take away from a program, we can think multidimensionally so that when we ask people for help, we have a better question to ask, or if we're just thinking about it ourselves, we have a, a more complex way of thinking about things that can maybe you know, take into account the context of our individual situation and help us come to a better conclusion or find a better answer instead of just asking what's the best exercise for this, that, or the other. And last but not least, we want to make sure that instead of playing to not fail or running to not lose or whatever, you know, that, that failure-oriented mentality, that instead of that, we focus on being confident, we focus on attracting success, and by doing that, we're going to have our best shot of running fast, playing well, and just having success in life in general by having this type of mentality. So guys, hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully this helps you in some way, or maybe you know someone who it can help and you share it with them. I would greatly appreciate that. But that's it for now. Uh, while you're here, make sure to hit a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, check the links below, and I will catch you guys next time. This is Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com, signing off.